having some issues with your alarm. What issues? Just leave and don't go back to your house. It's listening here. We have our program and it is working. Stress will increase paranoia and could lead to hallucinations. You need to stay away from triggers to another episode, like alcohol, staying up late, or seeing disturbing imagery. Accept that these things are only happening in your head. The system will notify you if it detects any unidentified motion. Motion detected. Jeffrey, there's a guy behind you with a knife. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is funny. I, it took me a minute to realize what that was. I had to do a ride for you, Justin, man. I, I, don't, I, don't I like that. Professionally, okay. thank you. This is a junket. We got to do a ride interview. <laughs> <laughs> Unknown caller. Great. Well, thank you both for joining me today. Talk about motion detected. And uh, Justin, you know... Evil security system where AI technology is designed to protect you and actually stalks you. Is this a coincidence? Because AI is in the headlines right now. I mean, you can't turn on CNN and not see a story about someone using artificial intelligence now. I mean, this is the stuff of science fiction, but it's a reality, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird that this sort of like zeitgeist is happening right at this this moment. I mean, I feel like when we wrote it, we were using AI in this more abstract, generic term, meaning smart home technology, right? But it has kind of morphed into this thing. And I think what is so timely about ours is like, well, we talk about everything that the harm, the potential harm that AI could do, but what if it could literally manifest your worst nightmare into reality, right? And like, that sounds very far-fetched, but maybe, maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not. Some of the stuff in the news was having me freak out is writing speeches and, and doing problems. And like, it's just, oh my gosh, the future is now. And and Natasha, your character is a recent victim of uh, home invasion and moving into her new dream home is more of a nightmare for her with her trauma. I love how this movie keeps you guessing. Is it reality or is there imagination? I think that it's a little bit of both. So I think it's also subject to interpretation. I think this, the ending of the film specifically is going to mean different things to different people um, just because we're all different and our experiences and our thoughts are unique. So I think that there's a lot of room here for you know, people to, to figure out if this was you know, something that was you know, more on a psychological scale or was actually something that was you know, truly, truly happening. But I think that the, the scary part of it all is definitely the AI takeover in our everyday lives. And I'm just glad that we were able to translate that on film. I was going to say, Justin, the thought of a home invasion is like high on my list of fears, but this is technology gone rogue, you know, a mixture of both fears for me. I mean, Diablo is like the HAL 9000 of security systems, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. right. And I think it was kind of, you know, it's kind of like, is there somebody on the other end? Is there somebody like manipulating this who's like an actual human or is it more like a HAL 9000 where it's like, no, this has become its own sentient thing, right? And I think maybe we were less tuned into the idea of sent it being sentient back then, but now it's like, that's a very realistic thing that we, you know, are worried about, like you were talking about reading about it in the news. Yeah, and I love how you have the cliche of the crazy neighbor saying, stay away, go away. <laughs> I love that, you know? I got yeah, it. and I think, I think so, you know, I think one thing, too, that we're borrowing just from generic genre beats is, like, she could have left the house, but she doesn't, right? You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with him. It's almost like paying homage to, to many <laughs> films like that where you're like, okay, why don't you just... Why you just leave? You know what I mean. Or so. just turn the power off. Just unplug it. You know. Yeah, just. <laughs> and people I tried say, that. Didn't I know. Work. Yeah, I was like, we won't have a movie too. No, it's, come on, it's a movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Natasha, how does an actress do you build tension in a thriller? How much discussion do you have with Justin? How much is of it that you go off to in a corner or you prepare for stuff? Because you have some intense scenes in this movie. I do, and I think it was just um, staying in character uh, throughout throughout the film, uh, throughout our filming, um, I was just, I was just in the zone. I was Eva and I just, I, I wouldn't let her go. So even a month after we finished filming, I mean, I was still Eva and, you know, 
people just didn't like me because, you know, I was just staying in character, you know, and it's just like, you're not acting like, you know, I'm like, no, this is, you know, this is just um, fragments of my character that are, you know, it's like character residue. And then you just like, you know, you move past it, you process it. And, but it's also, it's just part of, you know, being truthful and telling, you know, a truthful story as the character. And I think that as an actor, you really need to, you know, you really need to be that person. And, you know, talking with Justin about, you know, my character, her direction, where she was headed, um, you know, her thoughts, her feelings, everything. You know, I think it's just, we had a really good synergy. We have a really good synergy. We have, you know, that connection where, you know, it's just, I just understood what he needed. And I think I just also, I just, you know, would go out and I'd do the scene and he'd be like, yeah, that's what I was talking about, you know? And it was few words that were like, you know, that were exchanged. But um, I think that, you know, he guided me in the direction um, where my character, where my character was headed. And, you know, it was just um, a character development, you know, between director and actor. And in order, you know, to give, you know, a performance, which is truthful, uh, I think that you really do need to connect with your director and, and, and create this alternate reality. Well, Justin, I love the pacing of the movie, you know, uh, it just shows you don't need a lot of money uh, for a movie like this, a low budget film like this. It's also, it's cerebral. That's what I love about this movie, you know? And uh, was there much discussion on the tension and the paranoia? Because the pacing is really well, well done in this film. Um, you know, it goes through a lot of, to find that pacing, it goes through a lot of different iterations, right? Like we filmed a lot of more moody scenes uh, where there was a lot of slow camera movements and a lot of trying to build creepiness. And I think what ended up happening was we kind of liked it to be a little bit more, have a little more energy in it, if that makes sense. So we ended up trimming quite a bit of time on some of those those uh, slower scenes, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And uh, being a low budget film like this, was there much budget for the wine scene? Because uh, was that a one shot take? Cause you can't keep running dresses, right? <laughs> well, we had two, I think we had two dresses. Um, two we had, dresses, right? kept, one. <laughs> we kept one. Oh wait, so we didn't even use the other one. Yeah, I think <laughs> it was actually pretty amazing. Cause we had on a low budget. I think the most exciting thing about low budget filmmaking is that everybody's doing a little bit of everything, right? So we had somebody initially starting to do wardrobe, Meg Lamar, and she was such a wonderful, helpful person with a ton of ideas and um, she ended up doing a ton of things for us, but she was responsible for the dresses. So she went out and she bought these very cheap dresses because we could get multiples in our budget and she modified them herself to make them a little more what they were, something that, that Ava, the character would wear. And we only ended up using one of them. So that was pretty amazing. And I think one of the disappointments though, was that the white dress didn't actually show the red wine after it dried as much as we had hoped. <laughs> we were like, wait, isn't this everyone's like worst nightmare? Like a white piece of clothing with like red wine on it? And it's just like, no, it's actually not a problem at all. <laughs> it's totally fine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, congratulations on a great thriller. It was a total surprise. And uh, thank you for joining me today. And I wish you best of luck with the film. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you.